Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise in support of the bill. The amendments provide greater emp empowerment to Immigration and Checkpoints Authority of Singapore's offices, critical in dealing with any cross-border threats. In order to perform their duties better in their expanded role, the IC officers need to be well trained in protective security, especially during emergency situations. With the enhanced responsibilities comes the need for upskilling. As such, would the career path for IC career officers be similarly enhanced? Will there be a review of their career progression? Second, it is commendable that the Integrated Check Command will be better equipped to deal with any checkpoint incidents with minimal delay. This is essential to managing threats against Singapore and citizens. Two, would, would realise the importance of being vigilant against security threats. It is indeed a joint responsibility of both authorities and our citizens to ensure and enforce stringent checks at the border. On this note, how can civilians play their part in identifying and reporting potential threats? How can we better train them to be to bypassing information that's relevant? The collection of information of transit passengers is of significant importance for security and traceability. How will the information be shared readily, responsively and constructively with the other agencies to circumvent threats and adverse incidents? Are there cross-borders collaboration to better optimise data use and information? On the inclusion of new section 51AA, subsection 10B, the immigration officer may use all reasonable means necessary to make the arrest if the person to be arrested forcibly receives or tr tries to evade the arrest. I would like to seek clarification on what is considered as reasonable or what constitutes reasonableness. Are the officers given sufficient training to help them better handle the expanded and enriched responsibilities? On protection for the officers, are the officers better protected against complaints and legal actions from a suspect who may be injured as the officers restrain the suspect? If so, how much and how well are the officers protected? Will there be a consideration to enhance workplace insurance or workplace injury compensation for the officers with this enhancement of job responsibilities? Sir, notwithstanding this, I support the bill. Thank you.